Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to Grand Tactician, the Civil War. Uh, this is a new strategy and tactical Civil War game out by the developer Oliver Keppelmuller. And in today's episode, we are returning to our Confederate Let's Play series for episode number 16. Uh, this is a series that we have primarily fought in Virginia so far, winning a number of victories out east. Uh, but in the last episode, we just won our first victory in the Western Theater, I guess the Central Western Theater, winning a battle along the Mississippi at the uh, location of Fort Scales, driving back a Union force, and taking the force for ourselves. We are now in the midst of garrisoning and repairing the fort, or I guess we've completed that now, and dealing with the supply fallout of advancing into an area where we don't have enough depots or other supply uh, to keep our troops uh, rested and refreshed. Uh, this is uh, the opening stage to what I hope will be a wider invasion of Kentucky so that we can get that state firmly under the control of the Confederacy and all of the political fallout that will come with that. Uh, with that being said, I am going to jump ahead a little bit. This was taken from a live stream here, so we're going to jump ahead about five minutes. Uh, we are about to do some sort of army management in the east, uh, but then we'll come right back to Kentucky. Uh, and so let's go ahead and jump ahead. This was taken from a live stream on my Twitch channel, as I already said. Link in the description if you're interested in checking the videos full and uncut. I don't do a ton of editing. I don't take a ton of stuff out, uh, but I do take chunks, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes here and there, uh, as it makes sense, because this is a big game with a lot of logistics, a lot of sort of quartermaster stuff to do while you're also still fighting battles that can be pretty lengthy as well. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and jump ahead, and uh, I hope you guys enjoy. Supply situation isn't great. Is it going to start ticking up? Let's take a look. Well, forage is going down. Provisions are at 28%. Oh boy, and falling. Pause. So, let's change units of force. I think we've already maxed those guys out. Their supply, their ammunition is decent. All right. Can we forage? What do raids do? Burn down enemy infrastructure? If I get the right wing out of there quickly Perhaps that'll improve the supply situation? No, I meant raid up in the blue areas, but, you know, whatever. Okay, bond scandal. Supply situation's not getting any better. It is for the troops in the fort, but. We've invaded Kentucky now. Meanwhile, the Tennessee boys seem to be feeding off the land just fine. They're no longer starving. Credit ratings dropped to triple B. Um, Bounties, Conscription Act. What's the Revenue Act do? Fund the war, increase... Oh, this is an income tax. Yes, please. Screw debt. Tax, tax, tax. All right, what do we have available to us? It'll reduce the wealth, but... This will speed up railroad construction, which we're already working on. So we'll do that. We'll also do trade deals to the next level. And subsidize agriculture, I think. Like, we've got surplus cotton, so I don't really feel like that makes a lot of sense. Is 
Supply reform would probably help. Allows to expand depots two to three. I don't know if that's the best use of what do training manual manuals do? We could do ironclads. Thirty three thousand men in the Army of the Kentucky. Oh, by the way, this is what you guys were talking about. The Army of Virginia has just been raised. Are these the regulars? They are. Under Brigadier General Patton Anderson. We'll get some cavalry, too. 99-month soldiers. They never expire. They never go home. Okay. Ambrose Hill. AP Hill has arrived. All right. Thanks for the follow, Chaotic and Zert. Enfield Musketoons for these boys. And... I feel like we should have captured more useful guns by now. It really seems like the guns we capture, like I never see what guns they are. They must all be junk. Anderson's division. So Anderson's division is going to transfer, probably we'll get rid of it. And then what we'll probably do is just parcel those units out to the Army of Northern Virginia to each of the corps. Yeah, the Union guns probably are crap. All right. Supply alerts. Just the left wing. Where are we at, by the way, strategy-wise? The enemy's below 200,000 soldiers now. We are now over 100,000 soldiers. Why is Major General Joseph E. Johnson the general-in-chief of the Confederate Army? He's not even the commander of his own army. How is he the, how is he the general-in-chief? All right, why are these guys still starving? Oh, well, they're recovering. It's just taking some time. Oh, shit. Why is this blue? Where, is there an enemy army nearby? I'm confused. There's got to be a federal army around here somewhere. Well, that's weird. All right. So where are we at policy-wise? What are we doing? We're working on something, I think. Oh, yeah. Revenue Act. 19 days. 
Virginia. What's to see in Virginia? Nothing. The Yankees don't do anything in Virginia. They just sit on their asses. All right. When do these soldiers arrive? Could send the regulars to go after Fort Monroe. That might not be a bad idea. Messer, thanks for the follow. Uh, what are the regulars? Are they? They're not here yet. Nineteen more days. Okay. Also, projects. What am I waiting on? Credit rating. I'd like to get the credit rating back into the A's. Terja, thanks for the resub. Appreciate the support. Seven months now. McClellan, I don't even know if he's in command. I don't even know what they have in front of Washington. We might even be able to push toward Washington. The Army of New England. Just raised such weird num. num weird named armies apparently i was actually watching a live stream from uh also this is weird like wheeling fine but did we really cut the rail line here is steubenville ohio in our control let's make a drive for cleveland we're almost there we can cut the union in two um but i was watching someone else who was playing the 1862 campaign and it was i think at some point they the out, the AI just runs out of armies. It, it, they, the army they were facing was like the 35th army. Uh, yes, Terja, the Sharps are equipping one of the brigades in the um, Army of Tennessee. Officers. You shouldn't show me guys who are like dead. Okay. Okay. Well, it seems, I mean, our invasion of Kentucky kind of kicked off. It's not really I mean, 25,000 men versus 30 and only 19 of them are there yet. That's tempting. We just make a drive straight for Louisville. Do it. Um, pause. All right, so the invasion of Kentucky is well underway. We're very close to Louisville. Supplies are good. Our 10,000 Enfield rifle muskets have arrived from England. And we now have more stuff to do. No, not really. What's military education do? Each level of this project allows one military academy to be constructed. I haven't really done anything with that. Logistics reform. This will further reduce transport and upkeep supply costs. Yes, please. I don't even know what anything else is that I need, but I, I definitely need logistics reform. All right, so we've split Kentucky in two. The right wing has largely recovered its mobility. I'm a little bummed that we didn't bag the entire enemy force at Fort Scales. That's actually the first fort. We haven't even built any forts on the Mississippi River yet. The Yanks don't really seem to know. It's hard to judge how well... The game models the river combat because the AI doesn't seem to use it. Army of Kentucky, I think, is coming down to face us. They got 31,000 soldiers. Our right wing is 25, and then we've got another five with Albert Sidney Johnson just down the road with the cavalry. So it'll actually be a pretty even fight. I think scouting is going to be important. Let's do scouting. Right. 
right wing of the army. Let's right wing of the army is under Zolkoff or are any of these units small because of enlistments that expired. Not really. I give these guys Enfields. Let's give this whole division Enfields. Okay, mixed cavalry weapons, Springfield Musketoons. I don't have anything better. Sharps are ready in 67 days, that next order of sharps. Got plenty of freaking field guns. 265 six pound field guns because every time you raise a new artillery unit, they get freaking field guns. Uh, actually, maybe Johnson doesn't have any cavalry reporting directly to... Oh, no, he, do, no, he doesn't, I guess. Well, since Chase is largely stationary... How long will that take? Six days? Yeah, let's do that. Let's transfer Buford over to Zolkoffer. One army's in the field, the other isn't. Let's see if they get there. We'll hold off in advancing any further in Kentucky for six more days. Some land act signed by the Union. I'm just really disappointed at how inactive the uh, Federals are in the Western Theater. Do something. Do something. Which is better, the infield or the Springfield? I think most of what I've seen in the game or in real life, I think in real life, most of what I've seen suggested, like in documentaries and other things like that, tends to give more credence to the Springfield. That being said, the I, I'm perhaps, I think some of it, the infield might be better if you factor in training. Oh, I just said that, and I think the Army of the Kentucky is going to come down to fight us now. Is our cavalry there yet? Two days? Well, if they're moving by rail, we're not going to... They're not going to arrive in two days. Unless they're moving out, away from us. Oh, they're moving south. Four armies now. Wait, pause, pause, pause. Okay, so there are four armies in Confederate territory. The Army of Northeastern Virginia, we knew that. The Army of the Peninsula. Department of Pennsylvania. What? Okay, so there's three enemy armies converging on the Shenandoah. Actually, four armies converging in the Shenandoah Valley. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Are there two Pennsylvanias down here? Oh, it was Pen Pennsylvania, not Peninsula. Why don't they merge their damn armies? 27,000, 37,000, 47,000. Okay. Well, the Army of Northern Virginia might not be ready, and Beauregard might not be ready. But we're going to for sure move his corps up toward Washington. And then we'll shift west into the valley as needed. The uh, army at Virginia isn't ready to move yet. And the troops aren't all raised yet.
Where did those other federal armies go? They were invading the valley. Now they're no longer invading the valley? They all pull back? Perhaps to guard Washington from my advance? That would be my assumption. But we've taken back uh, Manassas. There we go. What about in Kentucky? Still nothing? Wait, where the fuck are these guys going? Are they going to Kentucky? Are they all going to Kentucky? Uh, okay. Well, at least the uh, cavalry is now there. Okay. So if that's going to be the case, let's consolidate the army of the Tennessee. Hey, look, folks, it's Little Mac. Okay. Albert Sidney Johnson versus Little Mac. 33,000 versus... It says 23, but... Pretty sure we've got... Oh, 23,000 infantry, 7,000 cavalry. Versus 26,000 infantry, 7,000 cavalry. All right. If I get to be on the defense of this, could be a nice little battle. The Battle of Louisville Munford Railroad, Kentucky, July 13th, 1862. The Union fields 34,000 men under the command of Major General Little Mac George B. McClellan. We fought him once before. He was in command of the Army of the Ohio, and we defeated him. Let's see how we do this time. I am going to go ahead and run a real an ad break here, guys, so that because I, I think it's about time for another ad break to kick in automatically. So before we actually get the battle going, I'm going to go ahead and run it. And then, uh, yeah. All right, boys, we are ready to fight. We're deploying our force here. I'm going to put my cavalry on my flank. We'll talk about this in a second here. Um, there's no real elevation advantage here. Do 
we have two batteries of artillery? Just one, just one. There's no real hills up where I'm trying to defend. But essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a defensive line here. On this road. Because I believe that's where the enemy is going to come. So we've got a couple of fence lines we can use as just sort of natural defensive points here. Solkoffer is the commander of the Corps. Johnson's obviously the commander of the army. So Johnson will go here on this hill to the rear of our position, so that gives him some ability to communicate with Imboden when putting off to the left flank. The objective is to hold this place down here. That's what the AI is going to be drawn to. And I believe the enemy's green and blue spot here indicates that's where the army will form up. Not familiar with this map, by the way. I never fought on this map before. But so we'll keep one cavalry division off to guard this left road, which the enemy could move down this road and then move in toward the objective from the rear. Otherwise, we're going to assume they're going to take the fork here and move east through Coopertown and then south along this hoedown road. We're going to deploy our infantry to follow this tree line here in the woods, and then we're going to follow these fence lines here in the open. We do have some points to spend for breastworks, so we're going to do that. Uh, I want breastworks, not parapets. In this lighting, I can't really see which direction they're facing. God. How the fuck am I supposed to? I'm going to guess that I've got them facing the right direction, but I really can't tell. Can artillery be based on breastworks? I don't know that they... Oh, they can. Nice. All right. Their range kind of sucks here. They don't have great visibility. Those three brigades there. They're kind of in the woods and then also in breastworks. And that'll basically be the rest of our points here. So we'll put these guys here. Here. Nope. Actually putting some of these guys out in front of the fence line. That'll let me move this division up, which is kind of our reserve to this fence line here. Now, this flank could be vulnerable to the enemy turning me. We'll see. They come down this, like, railroad cut or whatever this is. And if they go the long way, then we'll just have to completely reposition our force. So let's hope they come down the main road. Not. Fuck. Let me cavalry is coming down this flank. Okay, well, Imboden, go check this out. See where they're going to go. Should have built my uh, earthworks on the other side, or my breastworks on the other side.
Yep. I was wrong. All right. But in halt. Assuming the orders don't take forever to get to you. So they're going to come down this roadway. I don't really have a good spot to defend from over here. Donaldson's division, you're going to extend our left flank. Can we knock that battery out with a cavalry charge? It would be a nice early win in this battle if we can just wipe an enemy unit out. Pemberton goes skirmish with the enemy cavalry there to protect Stovall's flank. Stovall will go knock out this horse battery. Dismount our cavalry here. The enemy horse guns are quick. They can get away. Well, but some cavalry is coming this way too. So they may not entirely be coming from the left. Looks like the majority of them are, though. Cumberton's right, troops are going to engage the enemy here. We've got some cavalry fighting on the flank. I think all of these federal troops are going to be in their first battle, whereas mine are not. Although most of my troops really didn't see much experience, they all did at least technically fight in that previous battle. Charge across a creek, Stovall. Hit the enemy cavalry that's dismounted before they have a chance to wreck Pemberton's regiment. Get your sabers out, lads! Go for it! Oh god. They're turning! Charge! If it says they're charged by a determined foe, but the the one problem I would have with that is the determined foe is dismounted. We are mounted. Okay, the enemy's retreating. Oh, so are we. Okay. Well, Imbedin, your star has not been faded. Anyway, buying time on the left flank. Our other troops are fighting over here, so we're trying to reposition the Porterfield. Trying to get his division into the left. Or Donaldson, I guess. My cavalry is guarding our flank. Dismounted. Who's wounded? Commander of the something militia. Great. Oh, we just have a cavalry commander. Just get wounded.
need to buy time for my infantry to come up. Forgot about Pemberton too. So he's rotted now. Probably. He's not. Okay. Well, how about you retreat? There we go. Pemberton's boys might be panicked, but they're getting out of there. I think. And are they... Oh, they broke. They were pretty much out of range. Silly. Sharps is into range, maybe on the flank of that enemy infantry. Where the hell is this division? Get your asses up here, boys. All right, rather than get all the way up there, we're going to fight in the frickin' forest. So just pull back over here. Artillery, where is... This might be a good spot for you to go. Thanks for the follow, Beer. Just, like, came up in exactly the wrong spot. Florida State Militia broke. We've actually lost more men than the enemy so far. Federal decided not to charge. Why are they retreating that way? That seems ill-advised. Sharps carbines, do your work. fucking time for Donaldson's division to get into position. Can you rally any chance, Pemberton? Walker's regiment or brigade is actually not losing too badly in terms of casualties. I think they're definitely punching above their weight. But they've got their sharps carbines, which fire like nine rounds a minute. Sibley's pulling back. Evening Army Vet, hope you're doing well. Trying to reposition these guys. I think the enemy on this roadway is probably going to take the long way. So Porterfield, why don't you pull back? Hold this crossing in the rear. No, I'm not. Why are you in column, boys? Alright, I think Donaldson got the order for double line now, so no he did not, apparently.
I'd like to get the Sharps boys out of there. Alright, I think they routed this Federal Cavalry unit. Good for you, Buford. Instantly retreat. Please don't break, please don't break, please don't break, please don't break. They're nervous. I'm trying to pull out of there sooner or quicker. I thought they were mounted up. And they're broken. Fuck! These maneuvers all take so fucking long. Alright, Buford, like, reform up in the rear, and maybe you can rally. I don't know. Meanwhile, Donaldson. Why are you still in single line? You should have the orders all ready to go to double. Everything takes so fucking long. The AI did go around the Maginot line. Good for the AI, right? All right, the enemy's trying to advance along the open line. Why are you facing that direction? Or just, you know, turn and fire. I don't want you to... Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Over damn line and shoot. There you go. Alright, so we've got one enemy brigade here, the second brigade. They should get shredded. I have no reserve, so that's going to be a problem. I guess Porterfield could be my reserve, in theory. The artillery's trying to move over. I'm trying to reposition them. What are you doing over there? Yes, both have infields. You should be shredding this brigade in the open. There we go. Pulling back. Artillery further back on this hill? In any event. The great walkers losses units didn't even lose that much from a loss resiliency perspective. Units just withdrew. We actually have a little road here in the. Uh, I think this is a road in our rear. Are these guys not able to like fully set up their position? They seem 
Like, they're really struggling here. I guess they're not super experienced. Second Brigade's driven back there, 500 casualties. The Hounds Brigade now, We're, this is close in, fighting in the woods. Trying to remove one of those brigades over to be a reserve. But the in, I'm, what I can't tell is if the enemy is concentrating all of their troops here, or if there still is any chance of them flanking us to the rear. I'm going to gamble and just hold two brigades back on the ford. They could also cross here, which would be a problem. And then bring two of Porterfield's brigades forward to the uh, main fight, which is in this narrow clearing here. First Tennessee is stable, but losing. The enemy now has lost more men than us. Who's Amos did? My artillery's getting shot at. You bring your brigade over and flank the enemy. And field also. So go get over by your troops. Give them the support they need to have their commander there. Enemy cavalry is is in. It's like the only unit over there in the open. Volley fire up and down the line in a very narrow corridor. Tennessee state militia is about to rout. Fall back while firing. Should have issued that order before. Maybe the enemy will shift their fire to the first Tennessee, which is also not in great shape. Another enemy. Another officer. Hardy's wounded. this battle probably See both of the brigades in the open section routed. Bringing Loring up on the double. Let McCown fall back here. So I don't get it. They're retreating. They shouldn't be flanked. We shouldn't get the flank penalty. They should be showing their face to the enemy while they withdraw. Also, I'm going to lose my artillery because they won't fucking move faster. The enemy is coming this way. Gate up. We did drive Meade back. Cavalry, looks like. Let's 
So maybe we can flank their, their right here. Hardy's unit's not happy because he's wounded. Oh, God. This entire line's collapsing now. This is going to be a defeat. We're about to break. I guess this is why you don't hinge all of your uh, plans on a defense of where the enemy might come. So far, I guess. Sure feels worse than a miner. Second Tennessee breaks here. That'll be the battle. Well, I don't think they're going to just flat out break me, so that, that brigade broke, but then Fields was able to break the enemy first brigade. Mostly just trying to inflict as many losses on the enemy as possible here. All of our units have withdrawn. So we did in the end, by I did speed through that withdrawal phase. We lost all of our artillery, which played a role in us defeating. Um, we lost 1,100 of our 7,000 cavalry, 3,400 of our infantry. The enemy lost 3,800 infantry and 1,100 cavalry. So losses were about even, but they had 26,000. So they had a few more men to fight with than we did and ultimately drove us from the field. Can you retreat earlier to save some casualties? Sure, I could, I didn't. It's just considered a minor defeat. We will be pushed back, but we do have that second core of ours coming to Kentucky to help. Now, if the enemy's really gonna bring like four core in from the east, I don't know why they're doing that, moving from the Shenandoah to Kentucky. Yeah, losing all the artillery hurts. Although I don't know how to use artillery effectively in this game, so. Colonel Stovall's fallen into disgrace. Porterfield's become famous and an inspiration for his men. What did he do? His division was, like, not even involved. Gun. Yeah, the artillery will be missed. We can raise more. We've got guns in store. Okay, the Battle of Munsfordville. What does it say there? Okay, the Battle of Louisville Munfordsville Railroad has ended with the Army of Tennessee retreating from the battlefield in good order. My command has earned us a glorious tactical victory while whipping the enemy before withdrawing to fight another day. The enemy has reportedly suffered a total of 4,800 men as casualties, 630 killed, 150 captured. Morale's believed to be confident. So that's a permanent loss of 780 men. Our casualties are 470, 4,756 men, 620 killed, 734 missing. If the missing are all captured, that we actually lost considerably more permanent losses outside of wounded. Um, let's see here. So our other core is on the way up. These guys are going to withdraw, but all of these guys, if they're really all coming for us in Kentucky, I know I was complaining that, like, why don't they fight? But... That's nuts. If they're really sending all those guys toward me, you'd think maybe they'd care about Washington. Shit. 
Where are these guys taking their goddamn sweet time? No movement due to low readiness. Well, if they engage me again, I'm just going to fall back. I'm not ready to fight again, I don't think. Well. Morale's the main issue, I think. Also, what was that officer loss report? We had two officers, Anderson and Hardy, wounded. Uh, go sack Washington, I guess. Well, we were driven back in Kentucky, and now we're contemplating an attack on Washington, I guess. Uh, but that'll be for another video and another time. Uh, in our next episode, we will look at the Eastern Theater's attempt uh, to push back north and see if we can successfully take the federal capital. Uh, but until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, I hope you guys are enjoying the series. Please leave your thoughts down below. And as always, until next time, I'm out.